the brand new iPhone. Like I said, we haven't we haven't really been around for a little bit, so we're doing a bit of catch up here. Uh, the brand new iPhone got released on the 26th of September, if I'm correct. Sure. Uh, so, at least that's when you would receive it when you did the pre-orders. Um, so the iPhone XS and the iPhone XS Max. <laughs> Jesus, they really need to start abbreviating these phones. Yeah, nomenclature central. Uh, <laughs> um, but that's they got announced. And to be honest, like obviously with us talking about video games and consoles and things like that, I think bringing gadgets into it is kind of a good thing because I want to approach this from a slightly different angle. But before we go any further... Sure. Probably go around the room and just say what phones you guys have, if you don't mind saying. Uh, Ed, which phone do you have? I have a, I have a Google Pixel Two that I'm very happy with. Uh, Best friend I've ever owned. I have a Google Pixel One that I am very happy with. Good. What about you? What have you got? I have the iPhone 6S Plus. Um, That's a good phone. Yeah, to be honest, it's it's probably the best iPhone that I've owned so far. Um, I had loads of issues with the iPhone 5. Uh, just, uh, just, yeah, it was horrendous. I, a lot of people loved it. I just didn't, I did not like it. This is probably the best one I've had so far since, because I did the massive jump. I had like literally the shittiest brick phone you can possibly imagine for years, and went straight to the uh, iPhone 3GS, and was like, oh my god, have you seen this? It has a, it has a screen which is bigger than an inch and a half. <laughs> so I was a bit of like an old man when it came to it. I was just like. <gasps> There's no key buttons. It's all on the screen. Anyway, um, nothing about how old I am. Um, but <laughs> so basically, like going around the room, um, I, I should probably read out the pricing of the iPhone because this is what shocked me the most. I wanted to ask you guys, how much is too much for whatever phones? you're about to say? I imagine because the last model of iPhone was way too much. A thousand dollars for a phone. Well. Uh, we're say so we're going above and beyond that now. I believe that the just get all, all the pricing up here on my phone. Scroll, 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 scroll. Let's keep scroll, scroll. Jesus scroll. Christ, this article is massive. Um, but I think the cheapest version, which was the iPhone XS, was nine hundred and ninety nine pounds, and that's with the lowest memory, if I'm correct. And then the Max, at the most expensive. I believe, I'm trying to find the price now, but I'm scrolling and scrolling and I cannot find where the actual pricing is. Um, it was 1,000, I believe 599, if I can get an actual quote on that. Yeah, 1,099 for the max of the smallest memory and 1,449 at the largest memory. That is too much. I can buy a laptop for that price. It's like that's a just... laptop that does more than that phone. Now that that's so irritating. This phone does more than that phone does, and this costs a fraction of the price, mm -hmm. and it's really insulting. I'm sick of Apple because I used to be a big Apple person, and really, I'm not. Re I'm not one of those pretentious guys who's really behind Steve Jobs about it. But it was up until Steve Jobs died around that time that I was really big into them. I had a MacBook. I was using iPhones, and then the iPhone five came out, and I went no i don't like that i'm moving and mm -hmm. then i i jumped ship and then i moved from max to this to my, my pc because for the price i could buy two of these for one crap macbook i have to admit like I, I, that's not worth it i've always used iphones i mean like i said i i did a massive jump from a brick of a phone to to what i've got now and it, it, I, I've never been a Mac person. Like I, I, I do my video editing. I do my streaming here. We're using a laptop. I've never used Macs for anything in that way, and I've always been told that you should. Like, oh, it's you know, it's the best place to do uh, editing and uh, creation. And they, yes, they are very, very good. But the price just for me was, you, you, I could get more for a laptop, and actually have it at least customized to how I need, what I need for what I do for my job, than to actually spend another. 800 pound on top of the actual price i would pay for the laptop for something which not as good um so interestingly i i had a look recently because my girlfriend was given one by one of her clients one of the top spec ones and so i looked up the price and it's something like four grand and for that price i could buy two extraordinary laptops that, that's that that's would ridiculous. be future proofed 
And yeah. that's that's not okay, is it? Like, the, so the Google Pixel Three. I'm not aware of how much the three is going to be, but I'm fairly certain they said something like seven hundred and eighty pounds mm. for the the big model. I believe it's getting officially announced next week. It is. So I'm excited to see what they do because mm -hmm. honestly, Google know what they're doing with phones. You think they might not, but they know better than Apple, I think, in some ways. I've jumped back into Apple because I have an Apple phone as my work phone. And whilst Apple is very user-friendly and they're very popular phones, they they actually are weirdly unintuitive in a lot of ways. And my housemate, for instance, was very anti-Android and he mm. didn't want to move away from Apple ever got the pixel 2 when it came out because he was getting tired of apple's uh, prices and stuff and he's never gone back because he finds it's got more stuff and more customizability and it's mm. you know it's just a generally better phone so for me no is my bottom line these prices are unacceptable I have to admit, especially this, for what you're getting it's like say, I, I, and i do enjoy the iphone i like it i like the uh, for me i find it very accessible I find it very easy to use. And then sure. when quite often whenever I've used an Android, I always get really confused. I think maybe I've used some crap Android phones. Sure. sure. And I get confused really easy. I'm like, where the... That doesn't seem like... The Why put that there? <laughs> and I've always been a bit... The thing like is, that. you guys only have the one button, don't you? Mm -hmm. See, that is instantly... That makes um, navigation a little bit more of a chore. Whereas mm -hmm. on a Google phone, for instance, if I go on to twitch or anything you can see there's a home button a little menu button and a back button mm -hmm. and so all of those things are really really useful That's a really whereas good point. on a on on the iphone it's it's more about that then you have to reach up to mm -hmm. the corner to close well or the new one's down. that big apparently whilst those are fine like using... that's it's, it's just a little extra step yeah, apparently the new one the max is apparently that big that it's actually they've even advised you not to use it with one hand <laughs> Because <laughs> because they've curved they've curved it that much at the edges and made it that thin that it it can be dropped like so ridiculously easy. You know, oh, thinking, they shatter like nothing, don't they? That, these phones. It's just unbelievable. Oh yeah, <laughs> especially when you spent one thousand and odd pound on an iPhone. And it looks like it's gone. Like, yeah, if you if I'm spending that, I expect it to be made of bulletproof glass. Hey, uh, Paul drives an iPhone made for left hand. Uh, or why else is it back button on the top left? <laughs> Uh, also, on Lad, Lad Charles on uh, Twitch also says my current co uh, computer costs two k. It's a beast of a machine. But like, so it means like you could have a, a two thousand pound worth laptop, which will like you say future proof you for the next god knows how long. But you were mentioned there, Ed, about like using your phone with like Twitch and things like that. Mm -hmm. Like the one question I want to ask you both, because obviously Richard, you come from a writing situation, and Ed, you come from a video situation. How useful is it to actually have like an up to date smartphone with being doing like content creating? You know, which actually, one do you go for this one? Go, go for it. <laughs> um, I mean, from, from my point of view, I don't take videos, I very rarely take photos um, for the content that I create anyway. Um, I mainly use use it for taking notes if there's something that i'll think about on, on the way to work or anything like that and i quickly make a note of it so that's what i mainly use it for um which has been done on phones for yonks so for me it's not been an issue i just have a personal preference of using android over apple interesting so interestingly this is actually the topic i did for my dissertation at university i'll sit back now <laughs> I did, go ahead Ed. I did, my title was called the budget video the future of the music video and basically i set out the premise of if you assume that everybody because nowadays in the 21st century most 2014 it was at the time most people have a phone especially one with camera capabilities and so my i basically set out to say with a budget of around a hundred pounds can you record a song with a microphone that you buy and with instruments you already own mix it on free software on a computer that you already have and then film it on the phone that you've got maybe buying additional lens kits for three quid on ebay and then can you promote that on like can you publish it somewhere for free and can you promote it for free it was basically about how you can integrate mobile phones and stuff to make all the stuff that used to be very difficult to do throughout the 80s and the 90s totally free and 
the thing that I found whilst doing all my research was mobile phones are used extraordinarily all over the place. And one of the main places that I had heard they were used for one of the first times was around, maybe it wasn't one of the first times, the first instance that I'd heard of was a Burberry advert around the release of the, the iPhone 5 or 5S. And it was all filmed on several iPhone 5Ss. And I didn't know that until I did this yeah. research. So something like that alone proves that things like content creation are very doable from a mobile phone. Does it need to be the greatest phone in the world? It depends what you're trying to do. The conclusion I found from my dissertation was, yes, you can, you can do all this stuff for free. Is it as good as stuff you pay for? No. But it's still something and you can do a really good job with it and you can actually push it quite far my camera on this phone for instance is arguably the best on the market apparently apparently it's still better than the dual camera of the new iphone because this is a single camera so it's the best single camera on the market i think things like that are incredible for things like vloggers or for let's players being able to use your phone as a face cam or being able to use it as a vlogging device is incredibly important to people who want to be able to push content it's a shame the medium is breaking down a bit because it's not necessarily the formatting of their video as much as the platform of youtube that's a problem for that now mm -hmm. but it is easy to stick this just on one of those clamps and then walk around with that as my vlogging camera pointing it at my face mm -hmm. and it's got really good quality you can go up to 60 frames per second on this so if you were editing at a 30 frame per second rate which most videos on youtube are you can do some you can film b-roll and slow that down by 50 percent. so you've got slow-mo footage phones are incredibly powerful devices and not vital to content creation but they're vital for things like social media. They're vital for the fact that if you are a regular poster of pictures, videos, or even thoughts, you have instant access to all of them with great quality. I think it's it, they're such an adv uh, advantage in the world of content creation that, yeah, they're, they're a great tool to have. And especially for that they keep getting better. All you need to do is invest in a decent one and you've got yourself basically a kind of content creation pa well, it's just, that's, you've, i think you've just summed that up actually to be absolutely honest. go ahead richard you want to say something sorry yeah i'm just going to add to that that there was a, a film that came out this year called unsane um steven soderbergh i think directed it and had claire Foy in, and that was filmed completely on an iphone interesting there you go so there's a, a whole film so it's, it's happening now basically I the new see... camera as well uh sorry sorry to no, interrupt no, go for it. you're right you're right uh, but the new, the new camera, interestingly, with the new iPhones, because it's got the dual camera stuff, what it does is it takes a picture of the foreground and the background, and it lets you do what they call artificial depth of field. For those of you who maybe don't get what depth of field is, depth of field is the idea in a photo of depth. But so if you look at me, everything behind you goes blurry. The more blurry it is, the bigger the depth of field is kind of thing. So basically, you can now set that. So you could take a picture that looks dead flat where you can see all the trees in the background, or you can do a slider, and then suddenly those go really blurry. And that's really key for content creation at the moment because I don't know if any of you guys have used a portrait mode on any of your phones, mm -hmm. but that is already, it makes selfies look pretty like artsy and pretty good. I see one of my so, old... Uh work colleagues had one and it got to it showed me in the office and it was just unbelievable like it, it, yeah it, it was just like that's what we would be trying to do for like just generally on a camera <laughs> it's amazing exactly so if it does it for you and now you can edit mm. that on the fly it's yeah. becoming even easier to get professional pro quote unquote professional level quality you know and i think that's really incredible i think like you summed it up with saying like you've got like your personal pa right there and when you go to like gaming events or any other events like that having a a reasonable phone that yeah you know, it's, it's not it doesn't have to be the best but it's reasonably good you, like i said I've, I've been to uh, ejects down in london and one of the first one events that i went to and i didn't really have a lot of equipment I was a little mm. bit limited on what I had. I was on the, I was literally just starting out on YouTube, and I had just I needed something. So I actually bought a fairly cheap microphone, and it plugged into the bottom of my iPhone. And when I did cool. on-camera interviews, I had one of my friends do the filming, and literally just stood there with the microphone and just talked to him. I still use it now because, to be absolutely honest, the quality it was it was absolutely fantastic. And like, but then at the same time, once done finished doing the interview go away right whose interview we've got next bring up your schedule list contact them over twitter or messenger 
it's all there in your phone, which kind of becomes obvious these days because it's no sure. longer a phone. It's, mm. your it's everything else nice. as well. <laughs> it's yeah. your life right there in the palm of your hand. But I, I got to admit, it's, I think having, for my personal opinion, it's good to have at least a fairly high phone. Yes. You don't necessarily need the best phone. No, absolutely not. I think that's a great conclusion for that entire segment.